Hello, second and third grade, it's Mrs. Rewa. I am missing you guys. I hope you're doing well. We are still learning a new composer this month. Every month we have a new composer. So much fun. And this month, it's a composer named Frederick Chopin. He's one of my favorites, you guys, because he was one of the greatest composers, but also one of the greatest pianists. And the piano is my favorite instrument. Might not be everybody's, but it is mine. And he wrote some wonderful music, some music I played, um, my whole life I've played music by Chopin. So I feel really excited to share information about him with you. But I'm gonna do it in my blue bus. Remember I told you I had a blue bus? There it is. He even has a name. His name is Dr. Stewie. But I wanted to get outside. I hope you're getting outside too. I wanted to get outside because I've been sitting at the computer a lot today. So we're going to read the book in the bus. Does that sound good? Are you sure? All right. Come on, come on. Okay. So here we are. I'm going to set my phone up. I don't know if you can all see me, okay? And I'm going to scoop back in the shade just a little bit. Isn't this bus cool? We go camping and it's got a little bed and a little sink, a little fridge, all kinds of fun stuff. I like to think about going on a musical adventure when I'm in this bus. And today, I'm going to read you, you guys know it's a story about Frederick Chopin. Chopin. It kind of looks like Chopin. It's not Chopin. It's Chopin. Say it with me. Chopin. Frederick Chopin. Written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Thanks, Mike. Awesome story. Okay, take a look at him, guys. Frederick Chopin was born in 1810 in Poland. Almost all his compositions were written just for piano. Chopin wrote beautiful music for the piano, and he invented new ways of playing the piano. Frederick Chopin loved and understood music at a very early age. Like Beethoven, like Mozart, right? When he was about four years old, he liked to lay under his piano while his older sister, Louise, was practicing. And sometimes he would just burst into tears because he thought the music was so beautiful. It just touched his heart in such a special way. Here he is. Louise is playing. I like her stockings. And he has some tears. And it's sort of a comic. It says, Mother, please bring me a dry hanky. Better, better make it too. This next part really gets to me. It's a silly cartoon, but it's made to show you that he was very emotional. Music made him feel certain things. Music does that to all of us. Music is a wonderful, wonderful way of reaching inside of our emotions. Frederick soon began experimenting with the piano himself, and his parents were amazed by how quickly their son learned things on his very own. When Frederick was about six years old, they decided to find him a teacher. Adalbert Zwani, I think it's pronounced, was Frederick's first music teacher. He taught his new student basic piano skills, and he also taught him a love for the music of such great composers from the past, such as Johann Sebastian Bach, you know him, Bach, and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart, if you said it, you're right. It wasn't long before everyone realized that young Frederick Chopin had a remarkable gift for music. Frederick once told his father that it would be much easier for him to express his feelings if they could just be put into the notes of the music. So we have two pages to look at here. Here is what looks like a, a painting of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. We learned about him before. And then over here is a silly comic. Can you see what it says? It says, what's he saying now? Why the little boy is playing. And this guy's going, he says you look quite lovely today. And he's hungry. Frederick Chopin was a good student. and he listened to his teacher. But he enjoyed making up his own music more than anything else. By the time Chopin was eight years old, some of his musical pieces had been published and he had even given a public concert. At the concert, Frederick was more worried about 
what the audience thought of his new velvet coat and collar than what they actually thought about his music. How strange, right? We shouldn't worry about what people think we look like. It's what we do that matters, not how we dress or what we look like. As it turned out, the audience loved Chopin's music. <laughs> he says, gee, I must look better than I thought. But all the people are going, hooray, bravo. He's worried about that velvet jacket. How silly. Mr. and Mrs. Chopin, his parents, were proud of Frederick's musical talent. They made sure he had an excellent education. Just like your parents are making sure you have an excellent education at Assumption, his parents made sure he had a very good education as well. Mr. Chopin taught French to the children of wealthy families in Warsaw, Poland, and he knew the importance of education and good manners. The Chopins became friends with many of Poland's most interesting people. Frederick got used to having dukes, countesses, poets, authors, and artists visiting his home all the time. So here are his parents. And then here is um, a painting of Frederick uh, Chopin at the piano as a young boy. And there are some interesting people from Poland in his living room sharing that time. Now remember, you couldn't turn on the radio, you couldn't put in your AirPods to listen to music. You, If you wanted live music during this time, you had to have someone play it for you or you had to play it yourself. So music was a very social thing to do. If someone was gonna have a concert at their house, they might invite lots of friends to come over and listen to the music. While growing up, Frederick Chopin was always polite, well-mannered, and concerned about dressing neatly. Because of this, some people thought that he must have had a boring childhood. But Frederick was a lot like other kids, and one of his favorite things to do was ride horses. Although he later wrote that he wasn't very good at it at all. Here's a silly comic. He's on a horse. <laughs> He's saying, help! How do I stop him? I can't find the leash! And this girl's going, he's getting better. And this one's saying, yes, much better. And then on this page it said, Chopin also had a good sense of humor. Frederick drew funny pictures of teachers, schoolmates, and friends that kind of kept everybody laughing. He liked ice skating and he had lots of friends. Look at these silly pictures he drew of people. Look at this guy, how funny. Poland was having all kinds of problems when Frederick Chopin was growing up. The biggest problem was that Poland was always being taken over by more powerful countries. One of Poland's neighbors, Russia, decided it would like to keep a part of Poland all for itself. When Frederick was just 15 years old, he was asked to give a performance for Tsar Alexander I, who was the ruler of Russia. The Tsar gave Frederick a diamond ring after the concert. That was an exciting moment for Frederick Chopin. Here he is, is there? It's a young man. Chopin was becoming very well known and appreciated, but he was also becoming bothered that the Polish people were being bossed around by outsiders. This comic says, <clears throat> a gift from the Tsar. And he says, gee, thanks, I think. In other words, it's nice that they liked him and they liked his music, but if they weren't being kind to his homeland, then that's upsetting. You have to think about if you want to accept a gift or not, if someone is being unkind to your people. Chopin's teenage years were very important. He was getting his ideas together on how he felt about his country, his music, and his future. He especially learned a lot from going on summer vacations with his family. Do you go on summer vacations with your family? We do, and it's always a nice time to just get away and do some fun things with the people you love. In the countryside of Poland, Frederick Chopin saw the hard-working Polish peasants, and he heard their music. People had been singing and dancing to this music for hundreds of years, and Frederick got a lot of ideas for his own music from taking these trips. Sometimes when we take a break and we go on vacation, it gives us ideas for new things to create.
here are the people in the countryside of Poland. One popular folk dance Frederick learned about was called the Mazurka. Can you say that with me? Mazurka. Kind of a silly name. The music for the Mazurka is lively and exciting, or it could be sweet and sad. It was an important part of the lives of Polish peasants, this special kind of dance that they did called the Mazurka. People felt very proud of their homeland when they heard and they danced mazurkas, and they knew that they had something of their own that even a bossy czar couldn't take from them. So this dance had been a part of their heritage for years, the mazurka. When they heard the music, they would join together and they had special steps that they would do for the dance. Just like when we learned the Irish jig, remember, and we learned the special steps to that in class. and. That's very important to the people of Ireland because it's a traditional dance. And the mazurka is a very special dance for the people of Poland. Frederick Chopin ended up composing more than 50 mazurkas. He added his own special touches and mazurkas became some of his most popular works. Chopin's mazurka in B flat major is a good example of how he captured the spirit, fun, and excitement of Polish life in his music that one in a link after this video, you could listen to the B-flat major mazurka by Chopin. It might make you want to dance, so you should dance. And then this comic says, the czar demands from each family the following, two chickens, a pig, three ducks, a sack of flour, and four mazurkas. After Frederick finished high school and music college, he traveled to other countries in Europe to give performances. After a few very successful trips, Frederick and his family and teachers thought there would be better opportunities for him in cities like Vienna, Austria, and Paris, France. Music was much more popular in these cities than it was in Warsaw, Poland. On November 2nd, 1830, Frederick Chopin decided to leave Poland to make his fortune. He didn't know it then, but he would never return to the country that he loved so much. This is a funny comic as he's going away. Now remember, no cars, right? So everyone traveled by horse and carriage, and it looks like he has all of his things packed up for college. But over here, <laughs> his parents are saying, don't forget the piano, dear. And he's saying, Oh, that's okay, Mom. I'll just pick it up on my next trip home. Now we have keyboards, lighter keyboard instruments we can travel with, but a piano? Very heavy. That's silly. At the time Chopin left home, Poland wasn't the only country with problems. People all over Europe were getting fed up with outside governments trying to take over their countries or having their own uncaring rulers run their lives. It was a dangerous time to be traveling. Even so, Frederick continued on to Paris. Along the way, he heard shocking news that a group of Polish citizens had started a rebellion to try to throw out the Russian Tsar and his soldiers. Frederick was very upset and he was worried about his friends and his family. He became inspired to compose one of his most exciting and powerful pieces, the Etude in C minor. This piece is filled with the spirit of rebellion. In parts, it seems to explode with rushing piano sounds. All of Chopin's hopes for his country come alive in this amazing piano piece. He was able to put all of his emotion into the music that he was writing. And that's what we always want to do. We want to take whatever we're feeling inside of us and we want to put that into something good, into something beautiful. Maybe you want to, maybe you're an athlete and you want to beautifully play the game and run and do your best. Or maybe you're an artist and you want to paint something beautiful with all that emotion you feel. Or if you're a musician, you would put all of that beauty into the notes that you play. When Frederick Chopin arrived in Paris, he couldn't believe how busy and exciting the city was. Paris was filled with famous authors, poets, artists, and especially musicians and composers. Frederick was welcomed right away. He became best friends with one of the most famous pianists of all times, Franz Liszt. And we've not learned about him yet, but we will. Here is Franz Liszt. Liszt was a piano virtuoso, 
A virtuoso is a person who does something better than almost anyone else in the entire world. Chopin was surprised to find out that virtuosos would sometimes challenge each other to see who was the best. Audience loved these contests and once Frederick watched Liszt and another virtuoso have a playoff. So you see how there's two pianos on stage and they're gonna see who plays better. The comic says, hmm, I have a feeling Liszt is going to win again. In the past, Frederick had given concerts as a way of making money and becoming better known. But even though he was one of the best pianists ever, Chopin never really enjoyed playing for really big audiences. In fact, he was usually terrified of performing. In Paris, people weren't that interested in Chopin's concerts because Chopin wasn't a big show-off and he didn't play as loudly as other piano virtuosos. That was just fine with him though. He was able to spend more time composing, writing music, and playing for small groups of friends. Chopin also found he could make lots of money giving piano lessons to members of very wealthy families that he met in Paris. <laughs> this is a funny comic because they're trying to push him onto the stage. And he's saying, no, please, I'll do anything, help mom. And this guy's going, Chopin is the world's greatest composer and pianist. And this woman's going, who's that? He didn't like to perform. Not everyone does. One evening, when Frederick was at a party, Franz Liszt introduced him to a very unusual woman. Her name was George Sand. That's right, a woman named George Sand. George Sand's books were very popular at the time. She was an author. They were filled with new ideas and different ways of thinking and looking at life. And George sometimes would be seen dressed in silly hats or men's clothes. Sometimes she even smoked cigars, which was very strange for a woman of that time. Here she is. She didn't want to be like everyone else. At first, Frederick thought George Sand was just too weird to become friends with. But after he got to know her, he fell deeply in love with her. And for the next 10 years, Frederick Chopin and George Sand had a wonderful relationship. And it was during these years that Chopin was able to compose some of his greatest music. Love helps you to write beautiful, beautiful music. Here's the silly comic. Looks like they're out to dinner or something. Would you care to sit over here, Mr. Chopin? And he says, no, but my girlfriend would. Chopin composed so many different kinds of music that it's sometimes hard to keep them all straight. Some of his most popular pieces are dances, like the mazurka, remember we said that, polonaises, that's another kind of dance, and waltzes. Most of these pieces weren't really meant to be danced to. They were more about the spirit of dancing and the excitement of the times. He also wrote etudes. Etudes are short studies for teaching piano, but Chopin turned them into much more than simple studies. In the revolutionary etude, for example, you can almost feel Chopin's fiery temper. And Chopin's waltz in D major is so quick and breathless that everyone calls it the minute waltz, although no one can play it in one minute. The nocturnes are also very popular. The word nocturne means night piece. Chopin's nocturnes are slow and dreamy in feeling. They're great to listen to when you want to relax or think about things. Here is another painting of Chopin at the piano, and that is the piano of his time period. Very pretty. Unfortunately, Chopin had poor health for much of his life. And when he and George Sand broke up, he slowly became worse and worse. Chopin wrote a few more pieces and gave some concerts until he just felt too weak to do any more. And he died in Paris in 1849. No matter which category of his music they listen to, most people find Chopin's compositions to be some of the most original, sensitive, and beautiful music ever written.
And that is the end of the Chopin story, this particular book written and illustrated by Mike Venezia. Mike, we're so grateful that you're sh letting us share this music, um, this musical book with the children. And I would like for you all to think about what you just learned through this book about Chopin. And when you're ready, take the music quiz. Have a great week. Bye-bye.